Am I the asshole for cutting off my stepmom for wearing white to my wedding? This comment is not my story time. Instead, I mean Instagram. My stepmom has always wanted me to think of her as my bestie. She's like a cool mom, you know? When my parents got divorced, it was pretty amicable. There was very little drama. And I appreciated that because my parents didn't want me to grow up in an environment where I had to choose between them. My mom remarried and I love my stepdad. He's like a second dad to me. He also has a lot of money, so he pays for everything. My father and my stepdad actually get along really, really well. They both paid for my wedding. 30 years old and I got married to my best friend. The planning of our wedding was seamless because I had a great wedding planner and like i said my husband's parents and my parents paid for everything we had a healthy budget for the wedding my stepmom early on wanted to get involved and she was trying to pick out really expensive things for the wedding the wedding we actually didn't want to spend more than around thirty thousand. we wanted to spend more money on traveling for our honeymoon but my stepmom started inviting herself to every single meeting i had with the wedding planner my husband was very involved so him and i basically chose everything together whenever my mom would come she would try to come too this when she started trying to pick out the most expensive flowers the most expensive cake and flavors that we didn't even like and then she would insist on us picking those things. Every single time she did something, I would complain to my mom. My mom would just subtly let her know that we weren't going to choose those things, that we were trying to stay within a small budget. That's when she started complaining that we should have a bigger budget. That's seeing as how all of the parents were pitching in, our budget should be around $100,000. She said this to me and my husband. We both looked at each other and laughed. We explained to her that instead of having a huge, ginormous wedding, we wanted to prioritize our honeymoon. It planned to go island hopping in Greece and spend time in the south of France. And of course, we would prefer to stay in beautiful, luxurious hotels. That's when she said that we were being selfish that we were going to deprive our families of the wedding that we all deserved and that the wedding experience should be magical and huge and that no expense should be spared I couldn't believe that she was saying those things she sounded so stupid i walked straight to my dad and i explained to him that he needed to control her and ask her to please stay away dad told me that he couldn't do that because if he did she would get upset a single time family is involved in any situation in any of these story times someone's always going to get their feelings hurt and that's why people don't speak up since my dad insisted on not telling her i had to do it myself I told her for the rest of the wedding planning my husband and i would take care of everything this is when she starts to cry. Dad finally opened his mouth and explained to her that it was just best for everyone. Then she tried to guilt trip me. She told me that her and I had been best friends for decades, which is so not true. She said she likes for me to think of her as my best friend. She's not my bestie. She stormed off and then my dad made me go apologize to her, which I did. And this is the thing I regret the most. What she did next is so unbelievably rude. This is when I apologized for asking her to stay out of my wedding. This is the biggest mistake I made. This made her feel like she could do whatever she wanted. The good thing is she did stay out of the wedding planning, but the bad thing is that she actually succeeded in making me feel guilty. Even went as far as to tell my dad that I had never heard her this way before. For the rest of the wedding planning, whenever she knew that we were going to go meet with a planner, she would just mope around my dad's house and ask me what we decided on afterwards. Because I'm so nice, I actually decided to tell her what we were choosing. But of course, every single time I showed her something, she would start to criticize. At this point, my husband put his foot down and forbade me from showing her anything because he would see how I would react every time she she told me something. Finally, the day of the wedding arrives. We landed on a beautiful cake. The venue was small, but it was so beautiful. And we had every single thing we ever wanted. The entire family came over to get ready with me. This is where all the drama started. I had one bridesmaid who wore lavender and my mother who wore lavender as well. I told my stepmom that I would prefer her to wear lavender since she is my stepmom. I told her she could pretty much wear any color she wanted. Before the end of us getting ready, I noticed someone in white out of the corner of my eye. I was getting the final touches on my makeup, so I really couldn't open my eyes. I initially thought it was like somebody from the service. Then that's when I hear my mom gasp. I quickly open my eyes and see my stepmom standing in front of me, dressed in a full white gown. It didn't look like a wedding dress, but it was a gown. I guess to be more specific, it was cream colored. My dress was white, but with a hint of lavender. I couldn't help it and I asked her, why are you wearing white? She then looked around to the entire wedding party and said, you told me I could wear whatever color I wanted. My mom could not help herself. I told her that everyone knows wearing white to a wedding is inappropriate. My stepmom told me that we were just reading too much into it, but I was clearly upset. I told my dad he had no idea that she was wearing white, so she obviously didn't tell him because he would have told her not to. Thankfully, the wedding was fun and everything went off without a hitch but after the wedding i completely cut her off sent her a message telling her that she crossed several lines and that there was no way i could have her in my life after this my mom and even my dad agreed with this and my dad basically told her that she needed to stand down she's been texting me and calling me non-stop and i just blocked her am i overreacting wedding pictures look great except for the fact that my stepmom is in a white dress my husband wants me to just get over it because it's family drama but i think i should stand my ground Am I the asshole for stalking my ex-boyfriend? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. Everyone in my life thinks I'm crazy and obsessed with my ex-boyfriend. My ex and I actually started off as best friends. We met through mutual friends and I was not attracted to him at all. So when I say we were best friends, it was just best friends. After a year of getting really close to him, I noticed that he started changing. It really upset me because he was my best friend at the time. Anytime I needed to talk to somebody that I knew cared about me, I would call him. He actually came to replace my female best friend. At the time, I was dating a couple of guys and things were 
were just very complicated and he gave me very, very good advice. Like I said, he started to change and I knew that something was wrong. My friend group loves Halloween. We were all planning to do something really fun and exciting, so everyone was coordinating their costumes. Of course, I had to ask my best friend if he wanted to coordinate with me. He suggested that we go as the Adams Family and I was totally down. We were so invested in our costumes and everything was absolutely amazing. Halloween rolled around and we all went to a house party. This is when I noticed he was acting really strange. He started avoiding me throughout the party and I asked him what was wrong and he'd had a couple of drinks so he confessed that he had feelings for me. I was actually truly truly in shock. I never ever thought that he had feelings for me in that way. And honestly I felt betrayed. Up until that point I thought we were just friends. I had been sharing very intimate details about my relationships with these guys. A couple of times I had also changed in front of him. And I only did all of this because I thought he had zero interest in me. So when he confessed that he was in love with me I actually began to cry. He asked me why I was crying and I told him. He apologized and told me that he was in love with me from the moment he met me. I was extremely uncomfortable with this idea. I didn't speak to him for about two months. I definitely needed time to myself and to figure out if I even wanted to be his friend anymore. And I also wanted him to figure out if he was willing to be my friend. Because I can't be friends with somebody that I'm in love with. Especially if they don't love me back. He finally reached out to me on my birthday and we all went out together. That night something happened though. I saw him differently. Instead, I was seeing him more like a man, not as my bestie. I don't know how that happened, it just did. It's like I was seeing him in a new light and everything was changing. I asked him if he wanted to hang out and he said yes. He ended up hanging out at my place later that week and I went for it. I gave him a kiss and he was actually super shocked. He thought that I was going to tell him that I didn't want to be his friend anymore. And as soon as I kissed him, he actually started to laugh. He told me that he always knew that I felt something for him, but that I just couldn't see it at the time. After that, our relationship escalated quickly. I mean, we moved in together two weeks later. My family thought we were going way too fast, but I was kind of ready for it. At that point, we've been best friends for a year. I knew him inside and out and he knew me. A couple of months later, he proposed and I said yes. I was so in love and so infatuated. I knew that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with him. And then, of course, things started to change. I noticed he started getting a short temper. For example, if I did something that annoyed him, he would give me the silent treatment. And he began to get more and more annoyed of me. This progressed throughout weeks. And a couple of weeks before the wedding, he actually talked to me and told me that he was feeling different about it. He said he needed time to think about it. Because as soon as we moved in, he started noticing things about me that he didn't like. Obviously, this was actually shocking to my system. I never, ever, ever, ever thought that he would say that. Honestly, there was so many things about him that annoyed me as soon as we moved in together too. But I just dealt with it. I knew that moving in with somebody would be difficult. But to him, it was like a realization that maybe he didn't want to be with me. But because I respect him, I gave him the space he needed. He ended up moving out, and after that, he ghosted me. And this was even more shocking. This man was my constant. He was my rock, my best friend, the person I literally said everything to. I had zero secrets from him, and suddenly he was gone. Not only that, but he left me with all the rent. So I got stuck having to pay $2,600 in rent every single month. I was angry, but also super in love. Now, I don't want to say I became obsessed, but I couldn't stop thinking about him. I wanted to know where he was, what he was doing, who he was talking to. And this is when a friend told me that he was eating off of someone else's plate. In other words, he was cheating on me. Or that at the very least, he had fallen in love with somebody else. And that that's why he left. I started going to his job and he would refuse to talk to me. And there was no way I could get in contact with him because he blocked me. Before I knew it, I started following him everywhere. I even got fired from my job because I was showing up late all the time. But I couldn't help myself. I wanted to know why he left me. And this is embarrassing to admit, but I started following him everywhere. This is when I saw that he was going on several dates with different women. Then I started stalking the girls that he was going on dates with. I mean, maybe stalking is too strong of a word. I followed them once or twice, but I mostly started following him around almost every day. I was finally able to corner him at his gym. And he literally tried to run away. I had to put my car in front of his car so he wouldn't leave. I asked him why he ghosted me, and he said he just didn't want to deal with it. And I was so angry with him. How could he do that to me? After he was the one that was in love first, and the way he left me with the rent and all the bills to pay, he told me he'd pay me for the rent if I left him alone. Later that day, he sent me about $10,000, which did help, but still. It's been months, and I still follow him at least twice a week. And I think he has a new girlfriend. I've seen her, found out where she lived, and I go to her place, and he's sometimes there. Am I wrong for this? Story time about how my best friend was stealing from me. A little background information, I was 17 or 18 whenever this all happened and I was a senior in high school. Now my family and I had just moved to a new state and that is where I met my best friend who we are going to call Grace. Now, Grace and I clicked instantly, but anytime that we would hang out, she would always want to come to my house and never wanted to go to hers. Her excuse was that she had a lot of siblings and her house was super small, there was nothing to do, you know, which I didn't really care. I had no problem with this at all, until some weird shit started happening in my house. And when I say weird shit, I mean that stuff in my house literally started disappearing. 
Now, at first, I wasn't that suspicious because it was just my clothes. And y'all know how things get lost in the laundry sometimes. But then it started to become stuff like my shoes and purses. So, you know, I go and I ask my mom if she's seen any of my clothes or shoes or purses. And she goes and looks through her things to see if anything might be mixed in. But while she's doing that, she's realizing that some of her shit is missing too. So at first we're thinking that it's the cleaning lady, which I feel super bad about. But, you know, before we blame anybody else that, you know, we love and trust and we think would never steal from us, we would think that it would be more logical for somebody who doesn't really know us to steal from us. So we confront her and she denies everything. But just to be sure, we did something to test her and she did not steal our shit. But after this, we're getting a little bit worried that other stuff in the house might be missing. So we go and look and our jewelry is missing as well. So now we only had two suspects. First, we had my cousin because she would stay over sometimes. And then we had Grace, which I thought was very unlikely because she was always with me. But nonetheless, I started to be more cautious around her. I like I would try to be more aware of where and what she was doing while she was in my house. And for a few days, nothing happened. So obviously after a few times of her coming over, I was 99.9% .9 sure that she wasn't stealing from us. But then of course the one night, she must have not realized that I was still awake because she got up to, I'm assuming, go to the bathroom. So I keep pretending to be asleep. And when she walked out of my room, I saw her walk towards the living room. And I decided not to go out there. Instead, I was gonna wait until she came back with shit because that would be super awkward if I just went out there and she really could have just been getting some water or something. Well, what do you know? She comes back with some of our shit and she stuffs it in her book bag. So I decided not to confront her. I actually wait till the next day to just tell my mom about it. And that's when she told me that I just wasn't allowed to speak to Grace again or see her. But I wanted my shit back. So I go to her house to surprise her. Her sister ends up answering the door and she lets me in. So, you know, she brings me into the living room and I'm sitting on the couch. And whenever Grace comes into the living room, you all should have saw her. It looked like she's seen a fucking ghost. And then she goes, why are you here? Like, girl, you're not even going to pretend to be happy to see me after you just stole all my shit? After you just robbed me? How rude of you. No, but I actually told her that I was there to finish a project with her. So she was like, okay, we can do it in the living room. And then I tell her that I need to go to the bathroom and I go back. I find her room. As soon as I walk in, I see my shit. So I pull my phone out and I record everything. And she walks in her room. I don't even care. I'm literally still recording everything. Like she's crying and saying, oh my goodness, like, you know, my mom made me steal this stuff because we're low key down bad right now and we need money, da 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 da. And she knew y'all were rich. Like, babe, do me a favor, save the sob story for someone who cares. And okay, just for shits and giggles, let's say that you are struggling. If you're struggling that bad, you would have been sold my shit because why is everything still in your room? So, you know, I threatened to call the cops on her unless she gives all my shit back and she didn't want that. So obviously she gave it all back. Well, I did find out a few days later that she was in fact trying to sell my stuff, but I don't care. You should have just came to me instead of fucking somebody over who actually cared about you.